Sir, I beg you. Do you have a match, please? Sure. Oh. Hi. Hello, everybody. This is Tijin. And we're getting out of downtown, I think it's called. Is it where we are? Main Street. Uh, Arkham Map. Downtown, indeed. And that guy burned to a crisp. He had a letter. The letter didn't burn. It was made out of... Things. Apparently, it wasn't so much the sufferance of the horrors besieging Arkham as the broken, tormented state of his conscience. Where from... This game has been putting this word in here for a, a, a lot in the last few episodes. Where from arose his intractable wish for a fiery death. Please don't get... Don't suffer sanity, please. Thank you. Also, I didn't give any match to him. I don't know if I had any. You probably do. Uh, and we got that letter. Lawyer's suicide note. Experience gain, but let's not read that bit. Written at the back of a typed legal document. This note illustrates the inconsolable regret of a man who tried to cheat his own conscious... Conscious? Cheat his own... Conscious for the sake of grand... Of a grand ideal. I think it's conscience. Anyway. Not a single living creature would ever wish to hear that sentence. She didn't make it. I'm sorry. The awful power of those words seem more... Seems. Seems more than what... And I can't read the rest. I'm sorry. Seems more than what flesh and blood was made to withstand. Upon the news that my mother's sickness had become terminal, madness began its inexorable oration. In my feeble attempt to bring salvation to the unflagging misery of this world, I fed my vanity with my sorrow, and thus came to find myself sitting in the lap of evil, who mortifyingly, or how mortifyingly ironic, that by allying myself with Waxface, I became his lawyer and embody, and the embodiment of everything I detested. I was convinced that if I could use the money, tainted though it was, for good and justice it would not matter, but who... But would an agent of good murder someone as I murdered the lady at the customs? Yes, it was me who killed her. As with every failure that entails punishment in the law of lawless, I duly received my share as well. I flinched. I just wasn't as good a liar as I thought I was. Waxface, slitting open the lady's throat slowly in front of me, held my hands and pressed them against the crimson maw that appeared on her neck, saying, Her blood is really on your hands now. Day Crimson Sea Crazy. Sure. Okay, well, we got that, so so that was that. Did I actually got a quest update for that, though? Witnessing the miracle. I happen to eavesdrop on two cultists. We're talking about a miracle. Yeah, we're going to do that right now. Um, investigate the statuette, lead bottle. Yeah, there's nothing here. Let's just leave because uh, we are going into the theater and definitely not going to die and also definitely not going to be ambushed on the way to the Pilgrim's Parish. Last time we made this journey, we got... You have come across the mad fanatics of the cult. Uh... No. I need my robes? Well, I'm killing them. I, I, yeah, I'm killing them. No, maybe not. No, yeah, yeah, we are. They have extremely high reaction. With the arrival of fresh blood, the bond of faith between the cultists gets stronger. No, don't get stronger, get weaker. My uh, action points are incredible. Is that normal? Or is it because of high reaction? Yep. Yeah. Um, none of them seem to have weapons. So that's an interesting start. There's a lot of dead people around here, so that's also... A an interesting turn of events. I'm gonna try to kill you here with a couple of shots for seven and uh, another one for another seven and then we're focusing. Here comes somebody. Uh, this seems like not enough. Don't we have more spells? I'm gonna speed at you. Oh, we're not going to be able to spit. 
Uh, let's see, Evil Eye suffers capabilities reduced. Let's do that on you. And then I'll speed on you later. I suppose I could have gone just behind. But uh, we're gonna save. Let's see what happens. Maybe the other ones are weaker. Um, well, you have some interesting abilities. But we're not gonna do back shots here. Seven damage to the face. Save. And then you can do good things. And I will. Okay. Save. Interesting. I need to be careful with him. New turn begins. Okay. High reaction on our side. That's relatively good, in fact. Because we have you over here. And I can shoot you the one time. Let's see. Let's do that and save after. That's a rear attack. Uh, and we're going to save. And then you are going to spit at the guy. Look at that. He uh, he, did, he never made it before, before we did the thing. That's the one over there before we did the spell. So he's going to take damage because this does damage to him as well. No? Is he better at this now? Maybe. Mm-hmm. Interesting. We are attacked for four. That was pretty brutal. Please don't do that. Now I'll shoot you. A couple of times, maybe. And I'll do that. And then you are going to switch your weapon and hopefully kill him. Yep, that thing does damage for days. It's incredible. I'll take I'll take things and save. We should be fine. But we're not capable of fleeing right now. So let's try You're the one that has damage. Oh I should know that not have done that one. Should have done the other one. Seven damage, basically the same damage. Unfortunate. I would... Oh, we can flee. Great. Let's do it. Yeah. And we got experience and we got angst. We can live with that. I'm not sure what that fade to black was, but we can live with that. Thanks to Sonia Carter. The party noticed the danger from afar. Sounds good. Thank you, Sonia. I'm sorry I call you different names every once in a while. Raquel. Just... I don't remember. Anyway, we are very injured. Very upset with the whole thing. We also have the clothing of the clan over here. And uh, we're going to put it on. We also have the mark. No, we don't. It, it, you can't see it. The mark of the cleansing, which is uh, where, because we don't have a save when we enter here, I'm going to make it. Just make that save right there. Because otherwise we would have the save before that whole battle. And I don't want to do that. We went through the battle for reasons. Most of it was for, to lose the things. It was it was pointless. Those battles are pointless, and it's a shame that it's a shame that you can so easily avoid them by by just do the battle again or r r the journey again. So I like inside, and then he asks me for thing, and I'm gonna uncover my chest and show my mark of cleansing. With a peculiar look of satisfaction in his eyes, the hooded man examines the esoteric wound, which is still tingling on your chest. You said farewell to curiosity, my friend, cleansed. Why keep asking questions when there is only one true answer? The gods are real, and they are limitlessly greater than your fabricated fairy tale, fairy tale deities. Your submission is inspirational, brethren. The cultist steps away from the entrance. You should be ready for the revelation within, brother. Go and witness our beautiful doom. He looks at you one last time. And if you completely lose it in there, don't forget that the ultimate submission is to depart from the boundaries of your inferior mind. I would envy you if it was if I was capable of such a feeling. I think he's been cleansed of that as well. Magically, though, it might have been. 
uh, Theodore Bones. Blessed you are to witness our doom. Oh, the beauty you must have witnessed. I, I don't, I don't know. Oh, grandfather. Sanity lost. Yeah. You don't say. Um, oh, I'm alone in here. This is curious. Grant us the end. No, no, I want to see what that is. Children of Pazuzu. It's a good thing I didn't buy that one because I was about to. So there, there's a movie going on, and I assume I'm going to sit down to, to watch. Silver necklace, gold ring. Can I... Yeah, the scope of the wanton carnage that befell Arkham's higher echelon does a lot more than raise one's hair. The air of morbidness here is almost asphyxiating. Also, the stench of rot, most likely. It's just, this would be... This would be awful. Besides the being awful. Blessed you are to witness... Yeah, yeah. So I have that over there, but I can also go to the back. Let's not sit down for the moment. There's not much to interact with, which is interesting. So, uh, I say interact, I mean to um, read the description of. This fatted, putrefying, eg execrable, exec execrableness. Why? My god, the words I can't, I'm sorry. This fetid, putrefying execrableness was perhaps the head projectionist of this theater once, coma, before being resurrected and consequently assigned to assign the singular and unremitting task of running the accursed reel of doom, period. He mindlessly keeps turning the creaky crank in a series of spasmodic jerks without demonstrating even the faintest awareness of your presence. I wonder if I should risk talking to him. Examine the projection machine. It's rather obvious that the zombified mechanist rotates the reel, but you're clueless as to what provides the energy to generate such a powerful projection. He feeds the reel with the film from the bobbins, which are the the little things, uh, and um, they, they, they're called another thing, the, the, the in English. That's I think that's an English word, but it's not very common. On his neck, from the bobbins, bobbins on his neck, dutifully carrying out the per, his perpetual task. Um, I'm gonna tamper with the projector so as to halt its operation. A little bit more subterfugic. And I don't need to qu kill the fool yet. Seize the heathen! Me? That's cool. The cult's fanatics caught you interfering with the drill of doom. They have appointed you to the new projectionist, condemned to screen the apocalyptic movie for all eternity. Well, I guess that also explains what the heck's going on with the projectionist there. Uh, for all eternity, so it's undead, or, I mean, it's definitely... An undead doesn't last forever, so all, like, eternity is a powerful word. But, um, I'm gonna try... I'm gonna try considering other options. But also, yeah, there's nothing else over here. So I can examine the projection machine and consider other options. Withdraw your attention from the projector and its operator. Yeah, I could try to kill him, but I'm probably gonna die. Hmm. This movie projector is running uninterruptedly thanks to its mindless operator. How it can run in a place with no electricity, however, is a mystery. No, it isn't. It really isn't, in fact. Uh, there are... There are machine, there are cinema machines that are based on other means of uh, making light, uh, specifically portable machines for showing pictures to to people out in the middle of the the woods and all that. But that one evidently is it's got an electrical lamp, or is supposed to have. Let's sit down and just do our thing. I'm I'm sure I'm not gonna go mad. Oh, look at the pretties up there. No pretties? What happened? 
Oh. Oh. Will there be dancing after the screening? They say the producer is a wealthy foreigner. I've heard that she married an out-of-towner. Have you seen the recent show by the magician? Magnificent Horatio. Horatio. I know. I never know how to pronounce these names. You know how they are. I don't actually know who Horatio would come from Italy, maybe. A particularly frustrated guest glances around and grumbles. He grimaces. What is this garbage? Grape juice? Is this what we have deemed worthy of? What we are deemed worthy of in such a respectable event? Won't we be able to relish a real and, if possible, select wine? You, sir, do you condone this nonsense? P prohibition, my ass. Forget about it. This used to be the land of liberty. I'm sorry, sir. You seem to be uh, confused as to what the heck you're talking about. Whatever the law says. This motion picture technology is incredible. Look at the sharpness of this man. And I'm talking about him, evidently. The, <laughs> so I'm like, this is meta in the context of the game. The, the man stares at you with vacant eyes and then callously returns to his existence as if you are a, were, were a ghost. Hmm. So. You can't go outside. That guy over there looks like, uh, I don't remember what his name is. Sterling. Sterling something. And there's a, there's an animated series. I don't remember the name of it. I think I think it's called Sterling. But what's the other one? This man of short stature smirks like a child visiting a, a circus for the first time, and neither which no sorry, and neither with his uncouth comportment behavior, nor his ill-fitting attire, does he appear to have blended into his high-toned occasion or this high-toned occasion. He looks carefree, save the occasional glance as, or two at the briefcase he grips so lightly. Or tightly, in fact. Not lightly at all. Um, there are film scratches all over me! The man keeps clear of you as if he has taken you for a loony. Good evening. Enjoying the event, sir? Well, what's not to like about the greatest marvel of modern times? The motion picture, Even especially among such select guests, like myself, of course. He boastfully takes a sip and glances at his briefcase. Do you have any idea what this event is about? Why, it's the world premiere of What Awaits Us, pinnacle of motion picture entertainment. I have heard it's a scientifician title about... Yes, uh, about the destiny of mankind. Rumor has it the producers, the British type of humor, rumor, uh, the producers spent millions. Better to be worth it. Better be worth it. Millions? In the 20s? I think so. I think so. Yeah, yeah. There were movies with millions uh, of budget. Uh, your briefcase must be indispensable so as to be brought along with you here. His face sours for a moment as he draws his briefcase closer. If your chances of striking gold rested on a few sheets of paper, you wouldn't part with it either. Oh, may I ask what's inside? He is taken aback by your unwelcome inquisitiveness. Apparently that I wasn't properly cleaned off. I fail to see why it would be of any your, of your concern, sir. It's If it's industrial espionage you intend, a spruce gentleman suddenly intervenes. Gosh, Hines, have you sworn to embarrass me in front of every important figure in Arkham? I thought myself made I, I thought I made myself clear. You were to wear a tuxedo, not a an orange checked suit. Have you no sense of propriety at all? The cozy smirk on Hines's face immediately melts into shame. But Mr. Griffin, how could I have not known that I would attend a special occasion such as this? Mr. Griffith, not Griffin, did I say Griffin? It's Griffith, knits his brows. Your excuse is even lamer than your choice of attire, Hines. If these improprieties persist, I may have to review our agreement concerning my affiliates. I am entrusted with their reputation. Hines wipes droplets of sweat from his forehead. Yes, Mr. Griffith, I will attire, or I will attribute the utmost importance to such delicate matters in the future. Now about the contract, I would... The industrialist, the 
Griffith frowns with disappointment. Inappropriate, Hines. Such formalities will be settled another time. Now I must have a word with Mayor Anderson, if you'll excuse me. I would- I will need your help about the hazard suit. Now is not the time. Excuse me, he scampers after the factory owner, Mr. Griffith. Uh, he says, Mr. Griffith, Mr. Griffith, if you would just consider... And I suppose that's off. The hazard suit, though. That sounds like exactly what I need to get past that... That, uh, that street. If I need a mask and a hazard suit, which would make some sense. Not... An immense amount of sense, but still some sense. But still. So I can talk to that guy over there. And I, I must say I didn't see Mr. Griffith. I'm eating food over here. Not in my food, unfortunately. There's some people over here. They don't really say anything. Yeah. And I keep thinking that there's a way into that door. And there isn't. This is a problem. This is a problem. I can't do subterfuge. It's gotta be somebody over there or something. The movies, the, the, the soundtrack is changing as well. People are just mingling. Oh, there it is. Was that what changed? That's a ghost, isn't it? Although her appearance seems to be fitting, fitting the guest profile of this exquisite event perfectly, the elegant young woman before you seems noticeably distant and detached from the people around her. Without a word, she watches you emerge. The glitter of the pearls on her scintillating necklace is only shadowed by the mel melancholy in her eyes. I'm gonna greet her with a nod only. Good evening, sir. Her words sound like those of a ghost, bound to this place against its will. Excuse me, but you don't don't look like you're enjoying yourself. She's surprised by your approach and raises an eyebrow. Forgive me if I'm putting uh, a damper on your mood, sir, but I need to have the strength, no other remedy f to get out from this. I'll have to ask you to leave to my me to myself. Please just enjoy the occasion. Well, I don't feel like I belong. I've seen how you look at those people and you are damn right they are weird. They're colorless, dull, unacceptable. I have to admit you do not ha behave like most of the guests here. And I don't think I've seen you before. Are you an Arkhamite, sir, if I may ask? Uh, no, just visiting. I see. Well, thanks for your kindness, sir. I'm Amelia Emsworth. And she bows gently before looking back at the distant spot she seems to prefer to the most exquisite people of Arkham. Let's just say that my spirit is somewhat darkened by the loss of a close acquaintance. He was... dear to me, and his absence is felt keenly. Has he passed away? She, an uh, she answers with a hint of hesitation in her eyes. You could say that. We'll never see each other again, if truth be told. May I ask who that person might be? Her eyes search for someone in the crowd first, and then she starts talking again. You get, when she starts talking again, you get the impression the person she was looking for is nowhere nearby. I prefer to keep his name to myself, sir. You wouldn't know him either, for he is a gentleman of native origin. You would ne never see people like him at events such as this. It was an Abenaki Indian whom I met at a uh, seance. Oh, someone dear, you say? Let's just say he was the w only one who could see the person inside me. Know that I too have endured my share of losses. I haven't. I'm here if you'd like to share. Amelia remains silent. Together you look at the guests laughing, chatting, boasting, flirting among themselves, unaware of the inevitable awaiting them on the doorstep. You were slowly being hypnotized by the spectral humming of the crowd when Amelia's gentle voice brought you back to your senses. You have a feeling this movie reel which you find yourself in has a way of playing with your mind. I was about to get engaged when I met him. 
Amelia says, partly to you, mostly to herself. Benedict was, and still is, good-looking, educated, wealthy, everything a girl could ask for. Maybe more. And I liked him. That's true, but... Did I want to a life with him? I wasn't really sure of that. Father gave his full blessing to my relationship with Benedict. And why wouldn't he? He is such a... He is the, is the son of Mr. Anderson, the mayor, after all. But I never had the chance to hear my mother's opinion. Take her advice. She's passed away, I presume? Tuberculosis took her. She lowers her head. It's been three years. There hasn't been a single day since when I didn't feel the need for her guidance. So I decided to do something naive, even stupid. I decided to arrange a seance so I could finally listen to what Mother had to say from beyond the grave. You think I, this nonsense? I've seen much of stranger things in New England high society. <laughs> I can guess. To make a long story short, we became friends with the psychic I had hired to conduct this seance, a young Indian called Shad. Since the very beginning, his company made me feel at ease, at peace with myself. He was a bit withdrawn, yes, but was also thoughtful and perceptive. He always knew and, most importantly, cared for how I really felt. After a long while in his presence, I was no longer in a contest. I didn't have to prove how beautiful or ideal I was. I was just... just me. The fragile and gentle smile that appears on her face is quickly darkened by the ailment known as distress. Benedict learned about you too? It was Mayor Anderson who learned about us. His driver had been had seen us strolling through the willows. Arkham is no Boston, after all. So my future father-in-law... Oh, by the way, I don't know how to do a Boston accent. And all these people would have Boston accents. Because I'm pretty sure we're in, we're in Massachusetts. This, so that would be the... I don't know if all, the whole state has the same accent. I assume not, but anyway... So my future father-in-law came and told me something I still could, still can hear. He told me if I ever burdened his family in such disgrace again, and crystal tears formed slowly in her eyes. That's the tears that I need, I think. He swore to God that he would have that river rat sent to a eugenics camp out west, where he would be castrated like a worthless donkey. Well, that's right, in the 20s... Up until the 20s, and I think after, um, eugenics was a, was a, basically, yeah, genocide was a real huge issue, uh, still. And in fact, the, the Nazi Germany got a lot of its, uh, inspiration for eugenics straight out of the United States. Um, not necessarily with the whole gas chamber things, but... Uh, yeah, there, this was a thing. I'm not versed in this, but th this is this is a this is a real thing. This is a reference to a real thing that happened in the, in the, up until the 20s. I don't know the dates exactly, and I don't know the, know the numbers, but I know thousands of people um, were. Um, I think I'm not sure if they were killed, but I wouldn't be surprised. But at least castrated. That much I knew. Eugenics camp. It's one of those barbarous places where they do horrible things to people they declare unfit for society. They say it is done to improve the health of society, but everybody knows the truth. Hm, do they? And no one does a thing. They call it science. I'll tell you what it is. It's controlled methodical, method, meth, methodical mass murder. It is indeed. Well, sometimes I feel good about the world being destroyed. Imagining Chad in such a place for even one second froze my blood. I could never be the reason for that. At our... At our next meeting, I told him terrible things. Things I never meant. Someone's heart should have been shattered. I'm gonna say crying. Mm -hmm. I told him he was simply a plaything. Told him I found the mysterious Indian act interesting for some time, but in her eyes are crystals now. But I grew old fast. She desperately clings to your arm. I have a bad feeling about all this, sir. Uh, my heart has felt heavy throughout the night. She squeezes your arms. I have to tell you this, or I'll bust. The tears are beginning to flow. And you scratched this wound so much, too much, to li so listen. Amelia Emsworth loved Abenaki Chad like he she loved no one else. 
I'm gonna stay silent. As she collapses in sobs, you watch the crystal beads run down her cheeks. Under the bright light of the hall, of the hall's majestic chandelier, her tears look just as bright as the milky pearls of her necklace. And it's the damn bad person. Ladies and gentlemen, it is a privilege to host you in this terrific event tonight. I hope you all enjoy this miracle of the century. I hope you enjoy what awaits us. This is important though, because it's drawing your connection between our dreams and whatever this is. That's super cool! That's super cool! That was such a cool twist at the end! Because you could, you could sort of see that coming, right? They were trying to hypnotize the people to kill it. Kill each other. Oh, we have a lot more corpses now. Also, our sanity is gone. It's gonna be fine. It's gonna be fine, but it's not for this episode. For this episode, I'm Colonel RPG, and this has been Stygian. I really hope you've enjoyed it. And if you did, or if you didn't, be sure to leave a like uh, to make sure the next episode comes out sooner rather than later. Although, as I said before, they're mostly coming one every day because you like this series so much, and so do I. So thank you so much for enjoying it and uh, for watching and for staying with me, and I'll see you next episode. Bye-bye.